Hello and welcome to UiPath Studio, the professional development tool for robotic process automation, or RPA for short. Today, I'm going to walk you through building your first automation using UiPath Studio. Before we get started, let's have a quick look around at a few important details. The Tools tab is the place to go to install extensions that enable UiPath to automate many common application types. For example, to automate web applications, you'll need to install an extension for your browser of choice, like Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. But if you use Internet Explorer, no extension is required. OK, let's go back to the Start tab. From here, we can open existing projects stored locally or on version control systems. With a click, we can open one of the recent projects, or we can create a new project from a template. And UiPath Studio offers many templates, depending on what you're trying to do. For our purpose today, let's start with a blank project. We'll give it a name and click Create. When the project finishes creating, we see this main screen. To get started, click to open the main workflow. And this is the designer, basically the canvas where we'll add activities. The activities are the building blocks of any automation. An activity replicates a manual task that you would perform on your computer, a click, a selection, or anything like this. Now to add an activity in my automation, I can click the plus here, which will open the command palette. I can use it to search for activities using keywords. Or I can browse the activities panel here and see things categorized. Today, we're going to automate this unicorn name generator. It's going to ask for a name, so we'll say John Doe. We'll click Get Name, and there it is. Then we'd copy this name and do something with it. All right, let's grab the URL and go back to Studio. The first thing that we'll do here is ask the user for their name. This is done using an input dialog activity, and this needs to have a title. Since this is a string, we need to put it in quotes, like this. The second thing is the actual label. We'll say, What is your name? We'll get the name of the user, and then we'll want to store it. We'll need a variable, which we can create here in the Variables tab. Let's call it User's Name. Back to the Input dialog in the Properties panel, it has this result field. I'm going to start typing Users, and it's going to show the variable. Click on it, and it's where the input of the user will be stored. The next thing that we need to do is automate the browser. And there's a dedicated activity for this, called Open Browser. It needs the URL, which we have, and just need to paste here make sure that it's between quotes. In the Properties panel, you can choose the browser type that you want to work with. If we leave it blank, it will default to Internet Explorer. I prefer to work with Chrome today, so I'll choose it from the drop-down list. The first action to do when the browser opens will be to type into, just like a user would do. It's going to ask for the element inside the browser. When I click on this, Studio will go away. Normally, it would have brought up the application behind Studio. But in our case, Chrome is minimized. Let's bring it back with Alt-Tab, then click on the text box that we want to type into. It's going to ask me what I want to type. I want to type the value stored in the user's name variable. Then we'll add a click activity for the Get Name button. And then finally, I want to use a Get Text activity to get the generated name back from the label. So, we'll indicate the name field here inside the browser. And just like for the input dialog earlier, I need to store the value somewhere. So let's do it differently this time, by using the Control k shortcut in Studio. A new variable will be created. We'll call this Unicorn Name. All of the variables in Studio have a defined scope. In our case, it means that we can only use it inside the do sequence. It's a best practice to only set the scope of the variable where you need it. But we're going to need it outside this, so let's promote it to be the entire sequence. The final thing that I want to do with the retrieved unicorn name is to save it for later use. We can put it in all sorts of places, but today I'm going to store it in a text file. Let's add a write text file activity. What text do I want to write? I want to write the unicorn name. And where do I want to write it? We'll just call it name.txt, and since I haven't provided a path, it will be saved into the project folder, and we'll see it show up here. With that, let's go ahead and run the entire project using the debug mode. We can start it using F5 or by clicking here. 
notice how Studio goes in debug mode. It's popped up a prompt asking me for my name. We'll say John Doe. I can see Chrome launching, typing the name, clicking the button, and now it's done. If I refresh my project, we can see the name.txt. We can open the file from here with a double click. And here's the unicorn name, just like I had here in Chrome. It's that easy to build automations in UiPath Studio. Thanks for watching.